the tone of this little chat is going to be a, a little bit less upbeat than many of mine because it's a it's a difficult topic. I'm going to talk about the enforcers, and I used to be an enforcer. I spent about ten years uh, in various sheriffs and police departments, and I worked for a three-letter agency for a little bit, a state-level agency, and uh, I was an enforcer, and I didn't get to choose what I enforced, but I did the enforcement anyway, and I did things that I knew weren't right. I knew it wasn't right if somebody was going 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, and it was completely safe. I mean, any logical, reasonable person with good driving experience could look at the entirety of the situation and say, that's safe. It's completely safe. So I wasn't writing that ticket or arresting that person for whatever. 95% of the time, I wasn't enforcing something that I really, truly believed in. I was doing it. It was just, just my job. It was, I was just following orders. Though that's what I really, truly thought. And I thought that that was a valid excuse. And of course, I hadn't, at that point, I wasn't familiar with the Nuremberg trials and, and the kind of the realization that humanity had at that point that, uh, no, you don't get to do terrible, awful things to people just because somebody else told you to, your boss told you to. You don't get to do that. And it really makes me worried about our future. And, and I'm not a Republican or a Democrat, or, you know, I'm definitely not part of that uh, 80% of the, the world who believes in government politics and such. So please know I'm coming at this from a thoughtful standpoint, not so much from a, a news watcher's standpoint. I'm really worried about my friends who still work in enforcement. And I know many, most of you are probably thinking, well, wait a minute, why would you have a friend who is a, a Nazi gas chamber officer or a, an American law enforcement officer or a, a Marine for the US government or a British special forces? Or what, why would I have friends who are enforcers rather than thinking lay philosophers? Well, I like people like all kinds of people. I have friends that are just far left Democrats, they even identify as socialists. I just like people. And, and I've realized how many times I've been wrong. <laughs> and my gosh, I could be wrong right now. And I'm not going to get rid of relationships with people who I care about, because they don't think the same thing that I currently think I've changed what I've thought over the years. And we're all on different paths. And we're traveling at different speeds. But here's, here's my big worry. A good friend of mine who I worked with has several of his kids are now cops. He's retired and now they're cops. And he's a freedom leaning kind of guy. And he made a comment a couple months ago, something to the effect of, you know, I'm all for, you know, freedom and such, but nobody ever better mess with my boys. And then this made me think of the, the common military concept that, well, I'm not, I don't really want to hurt the people over here, the, the little brown people in this country halfway around the world. My goal isn't to hurt them. I don't have any bone to pick with them. I'm just here because it's my job. <clears throat> I'm just doing my job. And so are all my partners. And my partners, I do have a close bond with. And it's not an accident. That's the organizational structure of the the military is to build bonds between the people so they will never be broken or harder to break them. And so the, the common thing is why I didn't shoot that person because I wanted to hurt that person. I did that. I did that action. I took that action because that person was going to hurt my brother in arms. And then the question isn't asked of oneself, but did my brother and I have a right to be here? And so this would be akin to gangbangers doing home invasion robberies. And they break into a house and they're, they you know shoot the, the man of the house. They run into the other room. They see the woman of the house. 
and and she's bringing a gun up to defend herself and one of the gangsters shoots and kills her and then you ask that gangster and you say why did you kill that woman he says oh i didn't i didn't want to kill her she was just getting ready to hurt my my brother the guy who i've we've been through thick and thin together we share this bond she was getting ready to kill him and nobody gets to kill my brother in arms and they don't ask themselves the question but did my brother and i have a right to be here and i don't know what the correct answer is for this what happens if my friends and he doesn't work uh, in the area that i live but what if they did and what if my good friend's son the enforcer came to my door and wanted to arrest me and take me away forever because i i didn't take the vaccine for covid 24 16 bravo 18 or whatever the scary thing is at that point or because i spoke out against a member of the the ruling party whatever the reason for the arrest is it's not up to that officer is it it's not up to that officer just doing their job this concerns me and i and i hope it concerns you too and and i kind of direct this to enforcers military law enforcement code enforcement what what do you think I'll tell you what I think, but this isn't up to me. I could be wrong. I want you to think deep down. Should you get up in the morning or get up at night? I worked a lot of night shifts. Do you, do you get up and do you go to work and do you do what you're told to do by the boss? And whether you consider your boss to be your, your sergeant or lieutenant or general or president or constitution or whatever, do you follow that? Or do you follow your conscience? Do you follow what's in your heart? And my suggestion, I think we're going to all be happier humans if we say, yeah, we, we don't know everything. There have been sociologists that have done studies, and they know that, that poor people commit more crimes. And so, therefore, your boss tells you to spend more times in the ghettos and the mobile home parks and such patrolling. Therefore, you do end up seeing a little bit more crime there. You arrest more poor people. But that's kind of a good thing, according to the government sociologists, because poor people are more likely to commit crimes and kind of be dirtbags. Do you leave all that thinking to them and just say, well, okay, that's how it is. I'm going to go pick on this group of people. Oh, today there's a different administration in charge. Now I should pick on a different group. Oh, now there's a new one. Just doing my job. I don't like politics either. Just doing my job. Or do you say, no, uh, I'm not going to do what's wrong. That's not what I'm about. And here's the, here's the positive thing. I used to be an enforcer, and I'm not anymore. I have friends who used to be enforcers and are not anymore. Don't know any of them that left, that haven't made more money since they left. Oh, it's scary at first. I'm not telling you to leave your job. I'm just saying that that's generally the big fear of any government employee, cop, or other bureaucrat is, yeah, but I have a pension. I have my, you know, my salary is pretty good. I have all these benefits. Yeah, you're not going to have those benefits when you leave. That's for sure. They're, if you're dealing with money that's private money, it's, it's not going to be as, as fat as you, you are right now. But if you get out and you're smart and you work, you've learned so much about people in your current profession. When you get out, you can do well. If you have a good work ethic, you're going to have to work more hours, but you can do well. And you're doing it for yourself. And so I would encourage you, don't be scared of doing the right thing. I'm not saying leave your job, as long as your job is doing what you feel is right. And if you feel it's right that somebody smokes a joint and you get to kick their door in and beat them up and you know, take their kids away and put them into the Department of Family Services mess, ruining the, the family's life therein. If you believe that that's all okay, then you do what you need to do. Um, I, I think that makes you a sociopath, but that's just my opinion, and I could be wrong. Most of the, I can't think of a single cop that I worked with that really, truly cared if some unmotivated trust fund babies smoked some weed with their buddies at a party. What? Who cares? Even people who are doing things to harm themselves. I'm talking people who are drinking uh, liters of 
soda a day, all this sugar going in their system. I, you still, as a cop, you don't really want to go out and get into other people's business. That's not, hopefully that's not your nature. You just do it because it's your job. But if your job isn't a good job, or if you're not in a place you should be, you're kind of responsible for everything that happens. This is, this is a thing to think about. If you initiate a contact with somebody over something petty that you don't believe in, <clears throat> something that you don't truly down in your heart say, this person is wrong to be hurting this other person. I'm going to get between them. I'm going to save the victim. That's an honorable thing to do, in my opinion. I say you do that. I don't care if the law says you can or not. You do that. That's what good human beings, that's what sheepdogs do. And if you're a sheepdog, you don't need a stinking badge or government or constitution behind you. You need a set of cojones and you need some skills. Don't need to go to an academy to get them. You need some skills, some cojones. You need to just step up and man up and do stuff. You need to be a protector. And protectors don't do petty little stuff. And you know that if you start a contact, part of the thing of being an enforcer is you never back down. And so you'll let it escalate. And then you end up putting a person in a cage for essentially contempt of cop. But really, it was just you, you, the name you give it is resisting arrest or interference with an investigation or something like that. But really, it was an attitude arrest. And yeah, there's some jerks out there. There's some real jerks out there. But I would say that if you're a true enforcer sheepdog, your job isn't to go out and find little petty, whiny jerks, smart Alex. Like if that's still the level that you're at, like you're you're going to the local parking lot and looking for those darn teenagers who are driving around in their cars with their radio a little too loud. If I mean, if that's the stuff you're looking for still, I mean, if you're doing first couple of years of law enforcement, that's to be expected. But after that, you kind of like, whatever, they're kids being kids. And you go up and you chat with them a little bit. And you say, hey, the neighbors complained about the music. Will you turn it down a little bit? And hey, man, I'd appreciate it. And you, you take them a box of donuts or whatever and make a joke about how usually you eat them all. And then they like you. And then they do turn. The, it's like human interactions. Once you've been a cop for a little bit, you learn this stuff. Don't start stuff that's going to take you all the way to a bad level. Be cool. Be cool. Like, just be a good human being. And so you're probably right now thinking, well, I am a good human being. <clears throat> I don't do bad stuff. It's what I thought, too. It's what I thought, too. But there are a number of things that I did, all those little petty traffic tickets, contacting people just because I knew there was going to be an issue that would, would arise from it. Somebody with an attitude, some drunk person stumbling home. Yeah, there are times you want to keep people safe. There, that's the original reason for the public intoxication law. But there are enough people that get arrested for public intoxication where there was another option. And I encourage you to take those options. If you see something happening that is perhaps there's some law somewhere that says it shouldn't be done, but it's not hurting anything, yeah, let it go. If you see somebody who really needs help, don't follow that stupid department policy of waiting until there are two officers there to enter a family violence scene. If he's kicking the shit out of her, man up and get in there and do something about it. Don't wait until your second unit arrives. And I know it can be scary, and it's not for everybody. And if it isn't for you, and you do want to wait until your backup officer arrives, because the policy is that these situations can escalate and we need to, be, if, we're, if we get hurt, we can't help anybody. Get in there and do what you got to do. Like, be a real cop. Don't be a petty little administrative uh, guy like I was at many times, following policy. No. You go out there, you do the right thing. You know what the right thing is. Not Don't do the right thing according to me or according to your bosses. Go out there and do the right thing. Be friendly and nice to your bosses about it. Let them know, hey, I'm not going to do that petty stuff anymore. If it doesn't work out and for me to be here, that's okay. But, you know, I'm not going to be petty anymore. I've done too much of that BS. It's not going to happen anymore. You think they're going to get rid of you? There's a chance they will. But they're so desperate for people who can fog a mirror at this point that you're going to be just fine. You're going to be just fine. And if you do get canned, 
more power to like, yay, you go out and do something where you actually, at the end of the day, you can look back at what you've done and you can say, okay, I, I cleaned these people's teeth if you decide to be a dental hygienist, or I stitched this person up if you decided to be a doctor or a nurse or something, or I fixed three cars today if you're a mechanic, or if you're a contractor, you're like, I finished this house that I've been working on for two years, or oh, there's all these jobs in the free market where you actually do stuff that needs to be done and you see a result when you're finished. Like it's nothing to be scared of. So keep on doing your thing. Just think about what your morals are, your principles. And please don't put me in this situation of having to decide if I'm going to bow before tyranny with you being the, the tyrant. You are the, the hand of the tyrant. And you can't just say, well, yeah, the boss is a tyrant, but I'm just doing my job. No, if you're part of that whole apparatus, you are a tyrant. Don't be a tyrant. There's an easy way out of being a tyrant. Join the, the humans, join the people. You can still do the same stuff you do. Join the people. We want you, we like you. We don't like what you're doing now. But if you were really truly just protecting others, like a good sheepdog does, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. So that's my little message of, uh, of I guess it did end kind of positively. If, if you choose to man up, and be a protector, I guess that's the quick and easy way out of all this, um, rather than being a, a petty tyrant, um, like I was too many times. Love y'all. Please make good choices uh, based on what you believe.